everyone, welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh and we're doing the last week of February expiration 225, 22. This is advanced trader results for this week. Remember, this is for the GAP Options newsletter. I'm going week by week by week, showing the trades for the whole year on the newsletter. And again, this was the last week for the month of February. So now we have the whole month of February done for advanced trader. I'm gonna do beginner next. I'm trying to show people with different risks amounts that you can make money with a small risk and a large risk because everybody thinks they need all this money to, to risk to trade. No, you can take smaller risk. You can take one contract and still make money if you're using a good winning system and if you're using good picks, okay? So this is for the Gap Options newsletter, which is a subscription service you'd sign up for. So the class is separate, okay? If you wanna do just options, that's it you would sign up for this newsletter. So I'm trying to show people, you know, as much information as I can to help them make a decision. You're not gonna get the trains unless you sign up for the newsletter and pay. People are doing well this year. It has been a good year. While it has been tricky, I always allow people to email me and ask me questions. What do you think of this, Melissa? What do you think of this? And I put the targets on the emails as well. So, you know, today actually was a day where I got a bunch of emails today because I called a bunch of trades today and I had called Navinia, which we did, and that was that actually was negative before it went positive and then it ended up going and being a very nice trade. So, you know, I'm always here for questions if you need them as well and for the support. So the win ratio for this particular week, home runs all around, 100% win ratio, and the return on investment for the total of the week was 249% average return on investment for this one particular week. Again, it's week by week by week. We're doing the weeklies. I'm not doing long-term options or leaps. I just don't think it makes sense to do things out that much. You have to pay such a higher price. And, and, and honestly, I just don't think it makes sense. So if you're looking to train to, for income purposes to be in and out, this is what you wanna do. It's called chunking it out. So email me at melissathestockswish.com if you have questions. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, if you'd like to sign up for the newsletter, you can email me as well. This is all using one strategy. Every newsletter, I get up in the morning and I rate the picks. There are some days there are no trades. There are some days there are five trades. You never know. I never know. I don't know where we're going to get tomorrow. But I apply the system that I created, the rating system, to determine in the morning when I see the picks. So again, I take it one day at a time. That's how you should do it too. So this is the week of the 25th. There were 10 winners, there were 10 trades, there were zero losers and zero break-evens and 100% win ratio. Everything worked. This was a very profitable week. Uh, this is, I don't know if you remember back, February was a month where the market was slide, starting to slide off for the beginning of the year. Uh, so the average risk per trade for the advanced trader is 8,000 and the advanced trader profits for this one week with an advanced trader risk, 10 trades, which which actually, it may seem like a lot, but it's really not when you look at the money, $204,920, average return on investment, 249%. So definitely, definitely, definitely a nice trade. So let's take a look at the first one here. Again, this is the beautiful new format my assistant came up with, we started using in February. The QQQ 352 strike put expired 225, Again, we're doing the weeklies. 9.48, you can see in the morning, I sent the trade out. Timestamp is over here, okay? So if you're on the email list, on the newsletter, you sign up, you're gonna get the trades in live time. I called it on 2.16, exit was 2.18, and I'm showing, I wanna show you something here because I get this question a lot. The cost, 6.20 was the cost, 12. Risk, 74.40, sold $13.75. I'm gonna explain what the, what the other number to the right means in a minute. Profit on that was 9,016, return on investment 122%. I have 224, I just wanna show you here, because if you held it till 224, in other words, if you did not exit 218, if you held it to 224, which I didn't do, but I'm showing you here this, because people always ask me, are the exits the sole price always the best, highest exit in the options trade? No. That that's impossible, you know. While while I'm certainly very good at what I do, I mean, I it would be almost impossible to get out of every single trade at the high of the options trade. I mean, 
you know, you really would have to be a psychic to do that. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. So you do the best you can. This was a good train. You take it and it was up 122%. You get out. But if you held it till 224, you could have gotten out with a with a uh, sell price of 25, 25, which was double basically the sold of the exit on 218, which I'm gonna show you the chart in a minute. So my whole point here, which I did this on this particular week, because this particular week, past the point where I get out of things, they kept going, and they kept going a lot. You can't, I never go back and look and say, oh, shoulda, woulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda held it. No, I move forward, I move on, I take the next trade, I take a good trade, I book the money, I do the next one. Remember, you're in a trade, your money's being sucked up in the trade until you use it and get out and book the profit, the money, you know, it's never over to the fat lady things kind of thing. But I will tell you, you could have held some of these trades longer and you could have made more money. So for those of you that are always asking me, is that the best exit? No, you do the best you can. Again, I have targets in the letter and then I also have profit goals for myself. You can't just let money go away from you. So 224 was the, the best exit and I have that in here. So let's just look at really what the exit was on 218. So the trade was called 216. Actually, I called it here. This is a great call. Yep. I'm really good at reading charts. I called it here. So this is, this is I called it here. We gapped and the next day fell, dropped, boom but the 24th is here. And that's why I wanted to show you that. So the 352 puts on the 24th, the day before the expiration, we're at 315, that's completely insane. I mean, that's why the price was so high. But again, this is a good exit. Go over here and find out. This is a good exit here. Again, in the 340 area. There, this was, you couldn't have lost in this. It went, fell off a cliff. Really nice trade. Really nice call. Remember, that was a sell off at the end of February. Then again, the 443 puts in the SPY expired 225. This was called Wednesday the 16th. Again, $6.12 contract, 7,200 risk. Your risk should be the same no matter what it is in every trade. Sold 1225, but the better exit on 225 was 28. Again, more than double. We'll look at the chart in a minute. 7,500, 104% profit is a good, good, solid trade. So again, called it here, got the drop, continued down lower, look where it went. 410 was the 224. This was $33 through the strike at one point. <laughs> that's completely insane. And that's why you, you, you know, this was worth 28. But again, what would you have done if you got up in the morning, you're still in it? You get out, you get out as soon as you, you're up. You're up so much money, you don't even think. You press sell, boom. And again, we're buying puts and selling. We're buying calls and selling them. That's that's all we're doing. So we buy a put, then we sell it and we get out. You just get up in the morning, boom, you're out. Don't even think about it. Don't even think. I mean, that was just such a nice gap there. Then we did the Microsoft puts 295 on the Thursday, the 17th, called a little bit after the open. This was the 17th. 450 was the cost, 20 contracts, risk 9,000, sold at 975, got a great trade, 170% return on investment is a solid move. You take it, get the move and book it. 10,500, but if you held it again on the day that the market had that big gap down, you could have sold it for 19, again, more than double. But how can you question yourself? You can't, you can't. And I'm making a lot of trade calls here. I mean, it's an active letter. Same thing in here, where it was on the 8th, 17th. Yeah, I call this one on the 17th. Here's the drop, boom. And then here's the bigger exit if you took it, went to 270, it was $25 for the strike. But this is a nice trade here. Again, I'm calling this right in here. Take it over to the right. It's around 300, drops through the strike, falls, 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 you know. Again, it's all about momentum. But this was an exit on the 18th, which was a good exit, a good exit. You know, $10 to the strike there. 
That's why I was up more than 100%. Then we did the SPY 440s on the 17th too, because I saw the market would keep going. Sometimes I stack them like this as well. Uh, this we did, we'll go over this in a minute. This, so again, that's another idea what you could do. You could take one, take a lower one, get out of the first one, hold the next one. You could take two contracts, get out of one, hold the next one. I don't divvy up positions like that, but you could do that, I know some people do. So this was $4.70, 20 contracts. Risk was 9400 sold at $27. This was one that I did hold because I had gotten out of the previous one already and booked it. And so again, this was a lower strike, but I saw that it would continue. I saw the selling would continue. I saw the market would continue, and it did. 44,600, a return on investment of 474%. This is again why if you're doing, if you're stacking trades with different strikes, even on different days or the same day, you constantly have to be booking money in something. Don't take trades and hold everything is my whole point. You know what I mean? Because booking money is the name of the game, people. But you gotta be in trades that are good. So anyways, this is on the 17th, and this is the drop, and this is the exit on 224. By the time this had dropped though, by the time this had dropped, it slid off so much, there was no way in my mind for this that this was gonna get anywhere back, anywhere near or over 440 to reverse the trade. Like either this was gonna be up some amount or medium amount or small amount or a lot amount, which it was. Like in my mind, once this slid off here in the first 24 hours, it, there was no chance it would reverse, if that makes any sense. Again, this is all stuff that I talk and teach about in the overall Golden Gap class, which is how to rate the gaps and see these things in the chart before they even happen. I mean, I'm calling these trades before the moves are happening. It's easy to see right now and say, oh, you know, whatever. But when you join the letter and when you start to see the calls and when you start to see things, you will see it and believe that it's magic. And it is magical because I'm predicting the price action using advanced technical analysis in the gap, using my gap method. And the benefit of being in the letter is you take the trades, you don't have to go through the process each morning like I am. 1.13 on Thursday, the 17th, I called the Tesla 850 puts. So this was 225, again, expiration. 1550 was the price, five contracts, risk was 7750, huge number. Sold at 125, $54,750, return on investment 707%. This was really cheap for Tesla. I gotta say that. These things were a lot cheaper back earlier in the year than they are now. Puts, I mean. But anyways, if you could have, might have taken one of these, you know, at for 1550 and look at the price. I mean, so again, this really had a big move, but this stock can move too. So in reference to the date, let's find the 17th. Here we go. So again, would have gotten a little better price if I gotten in here. It's fine. We still got it early enough. Still got it quick enough. Got the drop. Boom. So you see where this went. So you're doing something that is an 850 strike. Okay. And it drops like a brick. Again, here's where we're doing it. Here's where we're doing it. So I, I, the strike was far away. That's why it was cheaper too. But also I felt that it would fall into the strike into the strike, which it did. Once it broke 900, it dropped like a brick. And then once it broke 800, it never looked back. Very similar to the earlier chart I just showed you where I felt like no matter what, this was not gonna reverse in any in any way, shape or form. But it also had the market with, you, with them. And these trades were called, and these were market directional trades. Do you know what I'm saying? They were setting up where I was seeing what was happening with the market. And we were doing these things in conjunction with the market trades. Thursday the 17th, 1.30 in the afternoon, Facebook 210s, 2.25. Again, called it on the 17th. I'm showing here again, this was one you could have held until the 24th too, I didn't. It, you gotta book money, like you can hold some, book some, hold some, book some. Cost was $4, 20 contracts, risk was 8,000, sold at 10, profit 12,000 with an 8,000 risk. Return on investment 150%. This is a good trade. You can't hold everything forever is my point. Don't be picky about everything. Exit on 224 though was $15. Just amazing. Really, seriously. With the $4 cost, so the 210s, 217 is here. Again, if you held it to here, it was at 190. It was $20 for the strike. But again, if you got in it, 
and got out of it here in the 22nd and booked the money, you were up. Again, 200 was the target. I mean, that was a very likely target and a very, very good trade at that. But that kept going too. Netflix 390s, 225, the puts again, Thursday the 17th, 116 in the afternoon. Oops. Uh, cost was 920, 10, 9200, sold at 2950, profit 20,300, 221%. I called this late, so I held this because I called this late. This was kind of late in the day too to do it. 224, let's look. 390s. Yeah, so here was this one, and we got the drop. Boop. I expected that to go more though. I really did. I, I, I really, really did expect that to go more, but it was a profitable trade. It was a nice trade. Again, it was a little pricey, but still over 200% if you held it. If you got out before then and made 100%, it's a win. The whole point is these were all winners. These were good calls, uh, good trade calls. QQQ's 345's expiring on the 25th. I called Friday the 18th at 9.35 right into the open. Let's take a look at what it did. 620 was the cost, 12, 74.40, sold at 15, profit 10,560, and returning investment 142% if you did that trade with the exit on 223. But if you held it until 224, you could have made 22. Again, I'm showing you here how a lot of times these things keep going, but you can hold every trade and you shouldn't hold everything until the last day. Now, this wasn't the last day. And anybody that didn't get out of these any time between now and the Thursday was nuts because they were all up so huge. I mean, literally they were up from the second I called them. Um, but again, I think it's okay to hold one thing, you know what I mean, or two things or whatever. So this was on the 18th. And then we got the drop. And this was the 223 exit. Just it was just a big fat red bar. I mean, you take it over here. It was the 345s. I did this a little late. I did it late. That's why I got out of that early too. 3:30 was $15 to the strike. Then we did the spies early in the morning, pre-market, Sunday out the 18th, 435s. Again, another put. Why? We were falling. We were gapping down. These were this was a good time to short. And we got it. We got everyone. Then all of a sudden everyone's talking about the market shorting it later in the later in the spring. We were we were in these shorts early this year. Very profitable February. 550 was the cost. 15 contracts. Risk was 82.50. Sold at $13. Profit 11,250. Return an investment 136%. That's a win. If you held it to the 24th though and didn't exit the 23rd, you could have sold it for 22. 435. 435. Here's, we did it right at the strike, drop, drop, drop. Again, exit the big fat red bar if you held it. Woo, 410. Yep, it was $25 to the strike on the last day. That's why that was so big. When you're in something, I wanna say this too. Say I call a trade, whatever, and then it gaps down the next day overnight when you're in it. So you're already in it, you're in a put. You didn't get out of it for whatever reason. It was up a little, was down a little, whatever, flat. The next day it gaps down huge in your direction. Those are the best trades. We get them. I absolutely call trades like that many times during the year. This is one where if you were in anything and you were in through this day, that is what occurred because you had a big gap down from the 23rd to the 24th, which pulled everything through. And then you're just up a lot. As soon as you get up in the morning, you don't even have to do anything. And you're up a huge amount of money in the morning. Those are the best days. You know, the 800, that's something I'm very good at doing too. I think that's that's something that's really kept a lot of people that are on the letter that are subscribers for as long as they are, because I call so many trades like that through a whole calendar year. Tesla 800 puts 225. I called on Tuesday, the 22nd, in the afternoon around lunch. $19 for four was 7,600 sold at 80. Huge trade again. This was Tuesday to Thursday, 24 to 48 hours. Profit 24,400, return on investment 321%. Remember, we were talking earlier about momentum and how important momentum is. Again, here is the 22nd, drop, 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 fell. So you're taking it here, you're exiting it here, that's it, you're done. Again, you're taking it here, the 800, so it was above the strike, looking for it to fall into it. It fell, broke it, fell off a cliff. It was a nice move. Again, take it over. 
even broke 700. So if you're interested in doing options, if you're interested in signing up for the Gap Options newsletter annual subscription, it's 12 months, take you, wow, into August 2023. The annual subscription is $69.99. Trades are emailed to you. You can email me if you want to sign up and start trading tomorrow. If you want to sign up for the six-month subscription, it's $49.99. Trades are emailed to you. Email me if you want to sign up as well. Again, no trials for the newsletter, and there are no monthly subscriptions. You have two choices, six and 12. I added the six-month subscription this year. That is very popular and will actually take you, if you sign up in August, into February of 2023. It's a lot of trades. We're having a lot of success this year. If you have questions or would like to sign up, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Have a great day, everyone.